Hi, I'm Joseph from Shell Harbor City Libraries. Um, I'm here with Ryle from Harbor Health in Shell Harbor Village. G'day. And I'm just going to ask you a few questions today about uh, stigma around mental health help. Yeah. So, how has the perception of seeking mental health help changed in recent years? Yeah, I think it's changed a lot over the years. Um, certainly in today's society, I'd consider that we're a lot more accepting and opening and open of uh, mental health support. Um, yeah, the dialogue and the narrative is, is getting a lot better. You know, I think we value as a society mental health support um, from young kids all the way through adult life. Um, and that's a wonderful thing. Um, we should, you know, the old stigmas need to need to get going um they're just not as helpful in today's world and and um yeah reaching out getting connected being involved with some supports whether it's you know psychologists mental health counseling things like that or even if it's your community groups and all the different things that do run are fantastic and so the more we're involved with that the better cool um and how can we further change the way we talk about mental health and seeking to help make acknowledging that you're struggling just a bit easier yeah, I think it start. It's, I mean, it starts in our friend groups, yeah. um, and our families, and our key relationships. You know, are we open to actually answering some questions with vulnerability? Mm. You know, when we ask how are you going, you know, are we opening to tell people um, that yeah, I'm a bit stressed, or I'm struggling with this, or I am challenged by this right now? If we can do that well, you know, I think that really sh shifts how mental health support and you know talking about this in the community sits. And that'd be really important. In terms of, you know, maybe furthering the discussion, I think it's about how we put some value on mental health support and say, well, this is really valuable for me. This is valuable for me to learn and grow and develop in this way. Um, you know, obviously there's a bit of a barrier in, you know, that traditional setting of seeing a psychologist doing counselling. Um, but the more you reach out and the more you talk about it, I, I think within the community we're pretty open and a lot of people are doing it and finding a lot of benefit from it. So. Yeah, open up within your friend networks. Chat about it, and uh, hopefully that will help. That's great advice. Thank you. Mm. Um, so, how much does preconditioned emotional responses affect how we express ourselves, particularly in males? Yeah, fairly uh, big question. Yeah. <laughs> um, our experiences shape us, right? You know what we grow up around, how we're treated. You know those things um, that we experience through our life all shape how we view the world and as adults we kind of carry that into our adulthood so you know from a young age if emotions are kind of neglected or not valued and not sort of supported then that can certainly shift when we're an adult into how we experience our emotions you know maybe we jump in with those old criticisms and judgments about them you know saying that we need to you know just get better or things like that and so that can be our bit of our preconditioned response um, there you know in terms of males and and how that affects well i think i think the stereotypes have rung true for far too long you know maybe we've been telling males or, or people that we just need to get over it and uh you know society shifting which is fantastic and so it should um and so you know for for guys and and men today um i think it's about being open and a bit more vulnerable with this and reaching out to your friend network saying hey this is difficult i'm struggling with this i'm feeling all of this stuff you know i need help i need support I need love, care, um, those things. And, and yeah, I, I think people today are doing a lot different, a lot better, a lot more connected, which is fantastic. Um, so yeah, it's, it's changing. I guess that relates to our next question, which is how can we start to break down the stigma and talk about men needing to just push through or be strong? Mm. Yeah, we need, we need to shatter the narrative that that's the case. And, and we are, I think, um, you know, very much so. But, you know, just pushing through is not, is not doing much, right? Like, it's just saying that how you feel doesn't matter, and I don't think yeah. that's right. Um, so the less we talk from that space, the better. Um, we've also got to shift how, how we view kind of mental health support. You know, those kind of comments when, when they've been there in the world, it, it sort of says that it's a weakness, and that's just not true. Um, you know, that it's weak to feel. And, and I mean, again, that's just really invalidating to what's going on for people. So it's, it's perfect that we're, we're moving away from that. Um, and I think, you know, I think the modern, you know, males in particular, but, you know, the modern person, a sign of strength, a sign of resilience is someone who is engaged in supports, someone who recognises that things are challenging and not working quite well for me and I'm going to do something about it. I think that's a beautiful sign 
of uh, you know the modern person and, and a wonderful sign of someone who is really connected to themselves and to the world and what they what they need. Um, so yeah, you know, I I think society's doing well. I think we're losing that narrative of just put through, get over it. You know, push through, get over it, which is great. Um, and yeah, onto better onto better ways of viewing mental health and and that as a component of your life. And just a last question, um, what healthy habits can people consider within their everyday lives if they aren't quite ready to seek help yet? Yeah, just thinking about the, the regular little things that you can do that maybe have a, have a larger effect. You know, if you imagine a crystal clear lake and you drop a big rock into it, it's gonna make all these small, tiny little ripples that will one day lead to a big wave on a shore. And that's what little change is like. You know, little changes, doing those things that you know can benefit, you know, and on a small, regular basis, and over time that will have large, large impact. So for everyone, I, I think that's, you know, stuff like our sleep, our diet, our friendships, our connections. I think in today's world, a lot of it is about our technology consumption and social media, um, the content we view and consume, you know, is that stuff healthy? Um, if we're putting it in and even maybe not considering it, it, it certainly is going to have an effect on us. So, um, yeah, focusing on those on those things, you know, making sure you're connected, um, you know, making sure that you've got a bit of a plan of what to do when things uh, might might get worse or be struggling more. Having that ready, um, yeah, those are those are some things that I think if we're not at the stage of booking an appointment with a psychologist, we can be doing that on a regular basis, and that will you know go a long way to helping our mental well-being. Well, thank you. That's right. it's been very uh, informative, and thank you for all your uh, kind of answers today. Yeah, um, thanks for having we'll me. have more uh, resources uh, at the end of the video, and uh, thanks. Yeah, fantastic.